Yo, what's going on, man? Xavier Porter, Brooklyn Fight, shoot the five. So, this one is watching this Anthony Joshua Kubrick pull-in fight. This was such a basic fight for Anthony Joshua to win. Real easy. Pulev brought nothing to the table. He didn't try to do anything outside of rabbit punching. He did exactly what he did against Vladimir Klitschko. He just stood in front of him and, and, and let the bigger guy punch on him. I don't know what game plan Pulev... Yeah, let's keep it honest. Like, like, like let's keep it a buck here. What, what, what game plan did he come in with besides to just stand there and, and not throw any punches? And the punches that he did throw, they were on the inside. They were rabbit punches. This was this was a boring fight. I don't care what anybody says, man. This 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 fight showed me nothing about Anthony Joshua. This showed me that he that he remains with basic skills because he fought a basic opponent. He fought an opponent that made no effort to win tonight. He fought an opponent that was real riled up yesterday at the press conference. It was acting a fool at the press conference, the final press conference, and came in today and did absolutely nothing. He was a shadow of himself yesterday. He did absolutely nothing today. I was so disappointed in this fight today. This this, this, this fight, there was no hype to it or nothing, man. This was a really boring fight. Yeah, he got the he got a nice he got a nice knockout, but he got a, he got a nice knockout for himself in his career. But but what did it prove? There was no excitement behind it. There was nothing that came with it. He knocked him down what three or four times, and he knocked him down with the guy doing nothing to try to stop him from getting knocked down. The last knockdown was a, was off a nice right hand, right? Knocked him down with the right hand. But that's after he done put in the work on the other bullshit, on the other BS punches he was landing, that Kubrick, that, that Kubrick was allowing him to land. Kubrick, did he fought the, like I said, I said it going into the fight, I didn't expect Kubrick to come with anything. I hoped he to throw through some punches. He didn't do nothing, man. This was, that guy right there, yeah, you got your check, you earned your check. You went nine rounds, you got stopped. You took, you took some shots from, from Joshua. But you, but you allowed those shots to be taken. You didn't come in there and win those titles. You came in there to get paid, Kubrick. You came in there to get paid. This was a bad fight all around. This man did nothing. This man stood in front of him with his hands wide open. No type of defense. I'm going to just stand here. I'm 6'4", six, 6'3 six, and a half. Josh was about 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, you can see the height difference, the size difference. So I'm just going to stand here with my hands wide open. No defense. I'm not going to tuck my chin. I'm going to play around. I'm going to smile. If he hits me with something, I'm going to act like it doesn't hurt. And I'm going to smile at the crowd. And then when we get clinched, I'm going to hit him on the side of the head and the back of the head. I'm going to rabbit punch him. That's all he did all night. That's all he did all night. I ain't seen no real jab work from the man. I ain't seen the man trying to land no right hands. I seen the man just stand in front of him and get pecked on all night by Joshua and set up upon, and then on the inside, Joshua landed uppercuts. Come on, man. When you, when you when you standing there with a guy and the guy landed five uppercuts in a row, there's a problem. There's a problem. There is a problem. Ain't nobody that good where they just gonna keep throwing uppercuts. You gonna keep taking them. <laughs> there is a problem right there and it's not the first this wasn't even the first series of uppercuts that Joshua threw he threw he threw a couple uppercuts where I was like okay that was a nice shot right there okay that was something different cool nice shot right there then he got predictable where he's like okay I'm throwing another uppercut I'm gonna throw another uppercut I'm gonna throw another uppercut because he knew the guy ain't gonna move he knew the guy wasn't gonna do nothing he knew Poole was just gonna still be there horrible man horrible fight Horrible fight, and, and 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 I can't say it's a horrible fight against Joshua because Joshua did exactly what he needed to do. He needed to go out there, lay hands on his opponent, defend his titles, and get his opponent up out of there. 
whether it be by decision, whether it be by TKO, whether it be by KO. He did exactly what he was supposed to do. He did exactly what he needed to do. Pulev, however, did nothing. Pulev did absolutely nothing. He did not make the fight. He did not bring the fight. Thus, he didn't make the fight. He didn't make the fight exciting. He didn't make the fight like, okay, well, Joshua's in a good fight right here. We can see more of Joshua's arsenal. You, you understand what I'm saying? Like Joshua had to change Joshua had to change his style up when he fought Andy Ruiz the second time. So it added to the excitement of the fight to see what kind of Joshua were we gonna see in that fight. And, and, he, and he came out and he proved to himself very well. But this fight, it's like he didn't it's like whatever he had before, he came out with it again and pulled up didn't take Pulev ain't take no advantage of or even press the action for us to see anything different from Joshua. Any, I, you know, when, when, I, when you see when you see fighters fight, you want to see something different. You don't want to see the same thing over and over again. You want to see if they're going to do something different in the ring to, to, to show everybody that they're a special type of fighter. Look what Tyson Fury did to Deontay Wilder. No one, a lot of people didn't expect that in the second fight. I, I, I'm talking about the dominance. I'm talking about the complete un dominance. A lot of people didn't expect that. He came out and dominated Tyson. He came out and dominated Deontay Wilder in the second fight. Completely dominated him. That's, that, that's what I'm talking about. He came out and dominated Deontay Wilder in the second fight. Showed everybody a different type of fury. And it added more to his repertoire. It made the fight more exciting. It made his career... To, to when you want to see him fight again, you want to see what he's gonna do do differently. This guy fights Pulev, Pulev, Pulev makes him do absolutely nothing. He comes out basic, jab, jab, right hand, jab, jab, right hand, jab, jab, right hand, left hook, uppercut. That's all he did through the whole fight. And again, I can't blame him because that's all Pulev was doing. Pulev was allowing you to land whatever punches you wanted to land. Come on, Pulev. You had opportunity here to to if not even not just to shake up the heavyweight division, but you had an opportunity here to kind of sh you know put people on notice and say, yo, you know, you know, I, I, I laid hands on Joshua, so can you? You know what I'm saying? You had an opportunity to really do that today, and you ain't do nothing. Pulev ain't do nothing, and, I, and I'm so and I'm upset at Pulev because you, you you didn't make the man fight the fight that a lot of people wanted to see. You didn't show, you didn't, you didn't make Anthony Joshua show anything different than what he is today. To make fans really believe in him to say, okay, he's the, he's the, the best heavyweight in the division. You didn't make fans believe that. You, you didn't make, you didn't make the fans believe that today. Box Rec got him ranked number three in the world. He's the unified champion, but Box Rec got him ranked number three in the world. Tyson Fury number one, Deontay number two. Anthony Joshua number three. Crazy. So if you came out and did something to, to kind of make him readjust, to do something different, to show everybody, like, listen, I'm not number number three or number two. I'm actually number one. Then okay, cool. We would have accepted that. But you you didn't you didn't you didn't do any of that. And, and like I said, you can't fault Anthony Joshua for not stepping out the box and, and being something different or doing something different or or, 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 or his, his character of a fighter. You, you want to make sure that whatever he does, he he makes sure that he get the win. He preserves that win. Preserve the quality of getting that win. He, he did everything he was supposed to do. Anthony Joshua fought the right fight for himself tonight. He didn't, he didn't go out the box. He didn't, he didn't stray away. He stayed, he's, it's like, okay, I'm going to step in this room, and I'm going to close the door, and I'm not going to go anywhere. That's what he did. He made sure that he just stepped in the room, he closed the door, he didn't go anywhere. In regards to his fight game plan. I'm going to follow my game plan to the T, and I'm not going to do anything different. If Kubrick would have stepped in the room with him, he'd have made Anthony he he'd have made Anthony Joshua adjust his game plan. But Kubrick didn't step in the ring with him like that. In a sense, Kubrick stepped in the ring with him, or stepped in the room with him, and just stood there with him. Probably didn't even take a seat; just stood there in the room and looked at him. All Joshua did was the same thing all day: jab, 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 right hand, left hook, uppercut. And then he grabbed in the back of his neck and hit him with like five, four or five uppercuts in a row. Like, come on, bro. How you let the man yoke you up like that and get, get, get throw man uppercuts like that on you? Come on, man. This was this was a this was a really whack fight. Kubrick, 
Cool ass, you did you you death shit retire. You 39 years old. There's no need for you to fight anymore. You probably made a pretty good 200, 300,000 off this fight. Who are you going to beat in the heavyweight division as it is going forward? Again, you're 40 years old, 39, get ready to turn 40. By the time you fight again, you're going to be 41. You're not going to fight a contender. You're probably going to fight another top 10 guy, another top 15 guy, just because of this performance again. You had, or you had it all. You had it all right here for yourself. You you fought Klitschko. You fought Klitschko about seven years ago, and you put it for the for the belts. So you had a second opportunity to become a heavyweight world champion, unify heavyweight world champion, and you failed. You dropped the ball, Pulev. You dropped the ball. And now we gotta wait for Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury, which might be a lackluster fight, also given their styles. Jesus Christ. Um, um, man, I, I, yeah, Anthony Joshua was dominant, but it's because Pula they do nothing. So you, you got one man that's, yeah, he gonna be dominant if the other man ain't doing nothing to prevail to stop him from doing anything. Ah, boy, oh boy. Xavier Porter, Brooklyn Fight, Shooter 5. I'm off this. I'm gonna go holla at, I'm gonna go watch the top rank card and, um, in the, in, the, in, the, in the PBC card, hoping hope my guys, Chris Colbert, Richard Sage, just pull off some, some great wins tonight. And I want to see if Belinda is going to get another first-round stoppage and um, Shakira Stevenson pull out a win. I'll let y'all, man. Peace.